Jeff, I want to ask you just a little bit about recruiting. What's the message to some of the recruits, some of the commits you have right now? When you guys are struggling a little bit, what do you what what's, what message do you portray to those guys? Yeah, staying the course and knowing that there's a plan and, and understanding that again leadership, not gonna flinch and continuing to, to believe in you know, the plan and understanding that we're we're gonna get there and, and be where we need to be. How much right now do you know the needs of your football program of your offense right now compared easily to what you had last year when you came in? Yeah, I mean I there's it, it's completely different just from the standpoint of understanding exactly what we have now being uh, nine games into this thing. You know, going through a spring, going through a summer, going through you know, nine football games, you know exactly where we're at from a roster standpoint and and what those things are to, to make sure that we're getting done through recruiting. One more question. 23-24, is it just a balance of keeping those 23 guys intact versus attacking 24 and getting that jump start? Is there, is it, how, how do you balance that at this time of year? Yeah, it's, it's constant. That's normal. You know, that, that, that goes with exactly what we're, we're doing right now, and that's, that's year to year. So that, that really hadn't changed much from that standpoint, recruiting all those classes. I know we asked you about the specific fourth down choice uh, on Saturday, but more broadly, I want to ask you about just the way that the thinking has evolved in when you go for it, how often you go for it, things like that. How have you seen it change in, in college football since you've been a part of it, and how has your personal feelings or philosophy changed since you've become a coach? Yeah, I, th I think it's it's changed quite a bit. Obviously, the analytics piece of it, and and using analytics throughout a game, and understanding what uh, conversions on fourth downs can do for you throughout the flow of a game, and and how it can affect the the end. And uh, so, just with that understanding and that that information, I think guys are a lot more aggressive than they've ever been, a lot more calculated than it's ever been from that standpoint. So. Uh, for us, you know, the the fourth down that we don't convert, that at the end of the day, man, that's going to create confidence or not create confidence to be able to go for them. And so we've got to convert. Uh, that's a play that, uh, shoot, that, that, was, that was a big one. And I, at the end of it, again, I, I think it affects us not going for it later on in the game. How do you balance that, what the analytics tell you, versus – just sort of that gut feeling and the way the game's flowing. And again, I think I think a bunch of that is how Coach V feels about it. We've again, we've got to do a great job of converting so it creates confidence for him to to say, all right, let's go for this thing. Hey, you you're four downs here, whatever it is. So that's that's our job offensively is to convert in those situations so that you have an opportunity to go do it again. Sticking with that, how, how has your relationship with the analytics end of it kind of evolved over the years from when it first got introduced and you've really been in this as it's yeah. uh, taken, taken shape? Well, there's just constant information and there's constant situational football that you're able to, you know, hopefully learn lessons, you know, Monday through Friday that, that normally maybe you weren't able to because you just weren't, weren't able to have all the information that you have now. And so... I think that's a that's a huge part of it when you're talking about situational football. With Jaleel Farouk, I mean, he's been a guy, seemingly you guys just find ways to get the ball in his hands right. and make him that playmaker. What's made him the right guy for that, and how have you, I guess, maybe evolved the playbook and, and the ways of just finding opportunities to do that? He's created value for himself, you know, and created value for us just from the standpoint of being a ball-in-hand guy and doing things, again, getting the football in his hands behind the line of scrimmage. Guy plays really tough. He's got great balance. He's got really good game speed. Uh, so we'll continue to, to keep him involved. Justin Cartwright. Hey Jeff, appreciate your time. Uh, you guys have a pair of one possession losses this season. I'm sure there's a lot that goes into winning 50 50 games, you know, but just curious to know what do you think is the most defining trait of a team that's able to continuously find ways to win those toss up games? I think it's taking care of the football. You know, not putting yourself in a hole, being able to play from ahead. And not having to play from behind, you know, I, th I think that's a, a huge part of it. Um, and then taking advantage of every opportunity that you get, you know, the four drives in the second half. Our first drive, we go three and out, a really bad drive there, and then on the third drive, had, you know, a, a real chance to go get points. We have the false start, and then we end up punting right there on fourth and three, and don't don't convert. So you got to take advantage of opportunities. Uh, it's performance based business. And you got to make plays and, and find ways to convert. 
Jeff on the, on the three interceptions that Dylan threw all were tipped in some way. What did you see on all those throws, and should he have made those throws, or you, what did you think about him, how he, you know, how he did throw those balls? Yeah, the, the first one we went back just had a chance to uh, to get it out of our hand a little earlier on to the field side, and then the the second throw was an absolute incredible ball. Uh, frustrated by that one with the outcome, but he threw just a great ball. Uh, B. Will gets his right hand on it, wasn't able to get his left one up, and um, and then the third one, you know, going through it and talking through it. Dylan hadn't done that all year. He has not put the ball in harm's way, uh, and he did there, and he knows that, and we want that one back. Offensive line, and again, you talked about the fourth and one that you didn't get. Um, in that game, that's a pretty good defensive line. How did you feel like at the end you know, that group, that unit played over? Yeah, we played good up front. Played really good up front. We dented those guys. Uh, played physical. Played hard. I, I, you know, still here we are Monday at lunch. Said it right after the game. The most frustrating part is there was so much good on tape, but you don't get to enjoy that because of all the other things, and we got to play better and we got to play to win. Uh, but big boys played good. Yeah, uh, Jeff, 31 touches for Eric Gray Saturday. What's yeah. it been like just to see him take his game to that next level? He's been a stud, man. He's been so consistent on and off the field, his daily routine, how much time he spends in the building. Again, since we've been here, Eric's been a pro. Uh, proud of him. He's had a bunch of production because of what he's put into it. Uh, Going to need him to have a go, go have a big one on Saturday too. Jeff, you mentioned Dylan's interceptions there. Obviously, he had just one interception coming into the game. Didn't I mean had done a good job taking care of the ball all season. What does the bounce back uh, process kind of look like following an uncharacteristic three interception game? Do, how involved are you with him getting him back, or do you kind of have to trust him to to bounce back? No, I'm definitely involved. But Dylan's played a lot of ball, and again, you go back and you watch the tape and. Um, the third pick was, again, something that, that we want back. He has not done put the ball in harm's way, but the first two really goes off a guy's shoulder pad and hits the guy right in the gut, and that's part of stepping in the arena. And then, again, the second one was was a great ball. I couldn't have thrown it any better. So um, there's just frustration in the outcomes, you know, and, and he's a guy, again, that's played a lot of ball, and he'll, he'll be ready to go play his butt off. Well, I mentioned Eric Gray, obviously, the, the eight catches. Is that something, you know, that dimension of him, you know, it seemed like Dylan found him in some short yardage throws. Is that something that, you know, can really be there moving forward? Too? Absolutely. A lot of that was what we were getting defensively, felt like that was going to be uh, the case. And EG did a great job making some of those plays and pitching and catching and creating some big first downs for us. Uh, yeah. Jeff, I know what you said about the two tip balls. Do you have to, as the quarterback coach or coordinator, or whatever, do you have to kind of approach Dylan a little bit? Maybe trying to repair his confidence, make sure he's not getting down on himself or anything like that? Yeah, just through meetings and talking and constant discussion since Saturday when we got off the field. Obviously, I think everybody's aware of our relationship, how much trust and confidence I have in him. Uh, I think it's likewise. And he's, uh, again, he's a guy that's played a ton of ball. Um, he's been in the building all day today, spending his own time, watching his own tape, you know, doing recovery. And he's going to go about his business the way he did. You know, last week, but he'll be he'll be ready to play and he'll be fully confident in in the plan and what we're going to go do on Saturday. I'm also curious about the first throw, the first interception. Um, the defender was in the lane. Is that something that he should see or pump fake or throw around? Or you see guys going sidearm these days? You know what I mean? Yeah, the very first one was one where we were in quick game and ball really should have came out a little bit quicker uh, to the field side. His that first read. Um, the outcome of the play was very frustrating, obviously. Uh, part of part of it was because we were late, and the other part of it was God tips it, and God makes a good play on the ball while it's in there. Jeff, you got two straight games without Javante now. How much do you feel like you've missed him broadly, but also I feel like maybe in some in some short guarded situations? Yeah, we're we're ready to have him back. You know, we we need to get him back. He's feeling good, doing good. So we'll see how he progresses this week, but need him back. Jeff, you went back to that mass substitution there in the first half. What do you continue to see from some of those looks, and how has that 
I guess, through the last two games, yeah. helping some of those younger guys? Yeah, just again, those guys have done a good job. They've worked themselves into trying to create a role for themselves. They've done a good job when they've gotten on the field. So just looking to continue to to give them uh, to give them more and give them opportunities to go execute. Jeff, uh, I know that uh, penalties have been an issue uh, at, at times uh, for this team on both sides of the ball. What, how do you go about correcting that, uh, especially during a season, uh, to you know try to get just clean things up a little bit in that regard when right. those seem to be a common thread in some of these tight games? Yeah, I think that. The biggest thing is being un- able to understand playing penalties and non-playing penalties. Non-playing penalties are inexcusable. Uh, when you're playing 75 plays a game and uh, you're playing center and you're battling every single snap and your right hand slips high one time and and uh, and you get a call, those are things that happen in the flow of a football game that you don't like and you don't want and you're coaching to correct it constantly. But the pre-snap penalties, the two false starts, can't be part of the game. So them just understanding how crucial that is. It's not just a five-yard penalty. We go from second four to second nine up to third and four and then end up punting the football instead of being first down and creating points. And you look at the scoreboard at the end of the game, three points is, you know, it's a huge help. So uh, just understanding how big of a deal it is and continuing to, to stress that. Pretty frustrating to see as many, like you said, non-playing penalties uh, at this point of the season. Yeah, those, those two for us were, again, just – Inexcusable can't can't happen. Jeff, at one wide receiver, I noticed that you know you went with a little bit of a different look with the, with Farouk outside, and, you know, and what you did with Marvin, and you had Drake inside, and, and Willis and Theo kind of came off the bench and things like that. Um, talk about what you're trying to do there, and, and what you're looking for there out of that that unit and that look. Yeah, look, looking for production, looking for guys to to strain and play as hard as they possibly can to to get us to plus one at the end of the day. I mean, that's what we're looking for. And so uh, rotating those guys, rolling those guys the way we feel is best so that we've got fresh, fast guys on the field while at the same time giving guys the opportunity to go be really productive. What do you see out of West Virginia defensively? Yeah, they're a group that's played a lot better at home. You know, they've played played tough at home, uh, very aware of, of how tough it is to go to Morgantown and go win. So uh, noon kick up there, we're going to need to, Strap up and be be ready to go play. Last one, back to Jeff. Um, the I wanted to ask about the process of the final play of the third quarter, third and four. And it looked like you guys were going a little tempo there, but the quarter was ending. Hurried into what got, what became a run that was stuffed. Um, yeah. Could you have gone to the quarter break there and assess things, and or or did you like that play call and how felt, it shook out? Yeah, fe- felt like we wanted to play with with pace right there to give ourselves a chance to get to a fourth and one fourth and two to go ahead and go for it that didn't happen um you know did not did not execute really up front we were really good there and and didn't execute on the perimeter but uh um, that was a deal where we wanted to get ourselves into a fourth and one fourth and two to go for it and didn't get there for more information you can visit tulsaworld.com